Hello, today we are going to finish our macromolecule series by discussing sugars. Sugars in biology are known as carbohydrates, carbo for carbon, hydrate for water. If you have a monosaccharide or one unit of sugar, it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. For every carbon, there's one unit of H2O. If you have lots of them in a chain or a polymer, that ratio is going to change and be different. So we're going to start by talking about monosaccharides, and there's a couple different ways that we can classify them. We can look at the number of carbons. For example, we have a hexose here on the left or a pentose on the right. I should mention that these drawings that I made are called Fisher projections, and each of these corners here represents one carbon. So when you're counting the carbons, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can call it a hexose. The other way we can classify them is by functional groups. So if you have an aldehyde, it's an aldose. If you have a ketone, it's a ketose. And the third way to classify them is by enantiomer. An enantiomer is just a mirror image of a molecule that's not the same because if you try to overlap them, it doesn't work. And in sugars, we use this molecule glyceraldehyde as our convention. And people did some experiments on glyceraldehyde and they found out that when this OH group is on the right, it rotates polarized light in a right direction. And they called that dextroeditory, or D. And conversely, if you have it on the left, then it's going to rotate polarized light to the left. And we called that lever rotatory, or L. Now, not all sugars are going to rotate light in the same way as glyceraldehyde does, but we do use this convention for all of them. So we always want to look at the second to bottom OH, or the first OH that has this kind of cornery thing as its carbon in the Fischer projection. So up here, we can see this one is D, and this one is L. So if we want to put all of these naming things together, we can say something like a D-aldohexose or an L-pentoketose. In biological environments, these sugars are going to cyclize. So I have outlined out here the reaction of how this happens. This oxygen is going to use its electrons to attack this carbon, and the double bond is going to disappear here, and we're going to make a circle. And there's two what we call anomers that come out of this. We can have this OH next to the oxygen down or up, and we call those alpha and beta. It seems kind of counterintuitive because you want to say alpha above, beta below, but it's the opposite. So I like to look at the actual letters, and this alpha kind of looks like a fish. So alpha swims below. And this beta kind of looks like a butterfly. And butterflies fly up in the air. So that's how I remember which one is up and which one is down. These monosaccharides can combine to form disaccharides, or two sugars. And this is done with a bond called a glycosidic linkage. And this glycosidic linkage can be alpha or beta based on the sugar that is using this carbon that determines the enamer. So this one, for example, the oxygen is down, and so it's a fish, it's swimming, it's an alpha. It could also be beta, but the one that I drew is alpha. These disaccharides can combine even more and form polysaccharides, which are really long polymers of sugars. And there's a couple different kinds that I want to go over. So us and all other animals have glycogen, Glycogen is a polymer of glucose that uses 1,4 glycosidic linkages, alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages, except when it's branching, then it uses 1,6 linkages, and glycogen branches a lot. That's what differentiates it from starch, and glycogen is going to be used for energy storage. If you are studying more biochemistry, please do not confuse glycogen with glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone, glycogen is the polysaccharide. In plants, their analog to glycogen in animals is starch. It's also going to be energy storage. It's also going to use the same linkages for when it's straight and when it's branched. The only difference is that it doesn't branch as frequently as glycogen. 
The other way in plants is called cellulose, and cellulose is used not as energy storage, but as a structural thing. It's a fiber. It's also a polymer of glucose, but it's different because it has beta-1,4 linkages. We cannot digest cellulose, but other animals can, like if you have a cow and it's got like four stomachs and a complicated gastrointestinal system, that can do it, but animals like humans, we cannot process it because it is that beta-1,4 linkage instead of alpha. It's chemically different. Anyway, that's the intro to sugars. Hopefully I'll be able to put out videos with more detail on enantiomers, more detail on sugars and how they work in the body. But this is it for now.